Hello and welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Verde Beach. And in the previous episode, uh, after building the harbor, we took a look at Verde Beach Central Station and saw that there is a massive uh, pileup of people waiting at this bus stop right in front of the train station. And today, we are going to take a look at why this is happening and try to resolve it by improving our transit and active transportation networks. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to take a quick moment to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Opera GX. Opera GX is the world's first browser for gamers, and it's extremely useful for gamers, especially those of us that like CPU and RAM intensive games like City Skylines. This is because of its killer feature, GX Control. GX Control helps you enhance your PC's performance while gaming with a panel that lets you limit the amount of CPU and RAM usage that you're allocating to the browser. So obviously, this is huge. We all know what a performance hog Chrome can be, so it's fantastic to have a browser that you can rein in. And if you're into streaming or online gaming, you can use the network limiter to limit the amount of bandwidth available to the browser. And the features don't stop there. GX Corner keeps you up to date with free games, the best deals, and the latest gaming news and releases. It even has a game release calendar where you can see the upcoming releases across all platforms. Twitch, Discord, Facebook Messenger, and WhatsApp are directly integrated into the browser. With all my accounts signed in, I'm one click away from being able to see when my favorite streamer goes live or send a quick message in Discord without needing to switch between windows. Opera GX's design is inspired by gaming and is incredibly flexible making it easy to customize the browser with themes, wallpapers, and colors. If you're like me, you love dark mode and are incredibly disappointed when sites blind you with their stark white pages. Well, Opera GX has a great beta feature that forces dark pages, which is perfect when you want your browsing to be a little bit easier on your eyes. And there are a ton of other features like the hot tabs killer, free VPN, and the video pop-out, but I'll leave those features for you to discover on your own. You can download Opera GX using my link in the description or the one pinned in the comments. And let me know what you think of the browser down in the comments using the hashtag Opera GX. Okay, so there are a lot of people at this bus stop. So I want to take a look real quick at the line details and it's going to escape me. <laughs> uh, See, so yeah, there, there's currently 1,279, 80 people, whatever. Uh, that's crush capacity for a bus stop that would never happen this is insane and i love that everyone wearing the same color is, is standing side by side makes me wonder why they're here are they are they all here just uh celebrating verde beach or are they the uh, the opposing sports teams i don't know let's let's take a look so i want to take a look at our traffic routes and see if there's anything i can learn from that i don't think there's going to be much i think that the way that we're going to need to look at this um, is to actually take a look at the bus lines and see where we're going. So when we take a look at, uh, let's see, I believe that this is the Buccaneer, maybe I should add an extra C there, Buccaneer Loop. We see that there, wow, we're up to 1400. That is insane. The next stop that's just down the block, still 323. Next one, two blocks up, 200. So really it looks like, I know there were some, some theories that maybe the reason all this queuing was happening was the university. We actually have uh, a couple stops that have their stops, their, their, their queues completely cleared. And that includes the university. So the stops that are, are really struggling are the ones going through this dense district, Ivy Heights. And actually, while, I, uh, while I'm uh, thinking about this, uh, one of the comments uh, that was left in the, in the previous video really cracked me up. So I want to rename this district. Fireside Commons, I think that's awesome. <laughs> so, uh, so it really looks like we need some sort of high capacity transit in this area to get people to and from Central Station. Uh, but there's something else that I was thinking about. Maybe it's not all uh, transit that people are looking for. We also don't really have a very good bike network at this point in time. So we, in, in the very beginning, we were very thoughtful about our bike network. And as a result, you can see that there are, there's utilization. But at some point, I just stopped. <laughs> so that wasn't great, but I have a great idea. 
and that is we have this excellent loop of roads going around this park and I think we're going to add uh, add bicycle facilities around there. So that's the very first thing I'm going to do before we even start with our transit network because I think that that's a really important thing to think about. Uh, it's, it's a way to get people around without a vehicle. Actually, before I do that, it's funny, uh, someone mentioned this issue. I, I upgraded a tram line a long time ago and I inadvertently took uh, the tram line that doesn't have roads and as a result there's this area that's not zoned <laughs> so this is incredibly valuable land let's get it zoned and let's have some trails going through here all right now we're back to normal <laughs> okay back to our bike connections Gonna do something a little unrealistic here. I'm gonna move this temporarily just so I can upgrade this road. Oh, I hate doing that. Now it's not letting me put it back. No. Oh, now I'm gonna destroy all the trails. Why is this road so wonky anyway? You know what? Maybe that's the problem. I'll just fix the road. Uh, this is this is gonna be addition by subtraction or something like that. Oh man, now I can't place it. <laughs> of course this would happen. Okay, well I have it placed again. I don't love all of the destruction that just occurred to make that happen. But, I think it was necessary. Or I should say, I know it's necessary because we need to get that connection through here. It seems like modifying this road is the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, it's not a road that wanted to be destroyed clearly <laughs> okay I'm gonna do it I'm just gonna get rid of this gate temporarily and rebuild it because we're just really spending a lot of time dinking around on this <laughs> okay so that should work put in another side gate All right, and after all that, we finally have our gate again, and we have a bike lane, and we have a street that's named wrong, so we'll fix that too. Okay, Greenaway is again Greenaway, so let's keep our upgrades going. Now we have a little bit more of a challenge here because we have the tram network in this area. So I think we're going to take this and reroute it a little bit. I hate doing this because this so often happens to the bike network where for one reason or another you can't fit it in so we'll just make it work is what they say. And the more I look at this that the more challenging this area gets. In fact it leads me to wonder if we need to stop here now and really think about our tram line a little bit more. And maybe one of our problems is that we're actually looping the tram network on, let's see, this is Lincoln Street. Maybe what we need to do is reimagine this a little bit and take, take the tram network down Sunset and get it a little bit closer to our central station. I could, I could see us looping around the harbor instead. And then we get a little bit more utility out of that tram network anyway. So. We're going to take a quick break on the uh, the bike network because we're going to work on this tram network. Get it out of the way. So I am going to pause this. You know, as I upgrade these roads, you see everyone's unhappy, number one. <laughs> and number two, you see that I am destroying tons of buildings, which I think is a really unfortunate gameplay mechanic. Uh, clearly that would not be <laughs> what would happen especially considering the right of way is not expanding in any way it's just kind of kind of maintaining but it happens in this game so we will work around it oh shoot 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 i do not like this at all i can't upgrade this road to have a trolley because it is the harbor road so i'm gonna break everything we did so carefully over here 
to get a trolley path through. So we've made our connection. I don't love some of the, the, the breakages. Uh, I guess that's not maybe the proper terminology, but we've broken things and I don't like that. So unfortunately, there's not a lot I can do about it. I can't modify that road without a, a mod. We're not doing mods, but it's not the end of the world. It's just a little inconvenient. Uh, people will still walk this. It'll still have some utility. It's just not quite as useful as it was, uh, you know, uh, two minutes ago. <laughs> so um, I want to go through now and look at what I've done here and see if there's any areas that need to be rezoned because I can see already that I've broken some of these areas. So I'm going to go through just with this marquee tool and fill in the zoning. And I think it was just in those couple of areas. Yeah, it looks good now. Uh, at this point, what I want to do, I want to take a look at the, tr the, the routes way before I go and demolish those tracks because it can be really challenging to actually move those tracks once you, uh, once, once you pull up. It can be difficult to move those stops once you pull up the tracks. So I like to do it beforehand. I just think it's a little bit easier. So the other thing I like to do is I like to turn off the other transit routes. Again, this is just a simplicity thing for me. I think it's easier to see. Uh, so we are going to be losing some of our close stops to the zoo. So I think we're going to want to keep that in mind and make sure that we have a stop in close proximity because I think that's a big loss for the zoo. Uh, but the loss for the zoo is offset by the gain that we're going to see for uh, Central Station in that area. The other thing I'm noticing is these stops, because they were looping, don't have stops across the street. So I want to make sure I add those. Oh, these stops are too close. So I did want to have one there. I guess this stop will have to serve everything. Now, when I'm placing these stops, I want to be really thoughtful about the things that are in close proximity. Offer transfer opportunities if I can. So that is why I have these stops right here. People can transfer and, uh, you know, so this is one, two, three, four blocks. One, I mean, this is really kind of one and a half, three be right here. And then one right at Central Station and we'll have one right by the harbor. Oh, I created a new line. Whoops. Apparently, I've just been creating a new line. <laughs> so <laughs> let's get rid of that. That was a mistake. I actually meant to add a bunch of stops. Now I'm confused because I'm looking and I don't, I don't see that second line. I'm not sure where I started making that mistake. But I did. And now it's done. <laughs> so <laughs> I will just move on. I guess that happens. Yes, people are happy. So, I don't know if I love this movement. I don't know that it really matters. I think I might prefer, though, that that first stop is at the harbor. We get that right right here real quick into the harbor. And left out, another left, as opposed to a right. Right, right. Actually, it was going in the right direction. Yeah, we want to be really particular about that. I wish that this stop was in front of... I mean, that, that's, that's the... I guess that's the rub with this particular movement. The question is, do we want the stop to be right in front of the train station or do we want uh, the maximum number of right-hand turns? Now, generally, I think I would say the maximum number of right-hand turns, but I don't want a thousand people crossing the street blocking traffic on, uh, on Sunset. So, I, I you know... I'm going to go back on this, and I am going to add this stop right in front of that bus. Well, no. I'll separate it a little bit so there's not a bunch of stacking there, but I'm going to keep more left-hand turns with the idea that it's less, uh, less of a problem to have a bunch of left-hand turns than it is to have a thousand people crossing the street to get to this particular station. So, now that we have that, let's get back Let's take a look at these roads that we have and get them converted. I'm going to be conscientious and let these tram lines get off from those tracks before I upgrade. 
And there we go. <laughs> so now I'm going to take a look at these roads and get them upgraded. And we can go back to our bike network now. Now that we've upgraded those roads, we can continue this network. So I've got a choice now. I could bring it back to the zoo, or I could kind of continue down this path and maybe take a longer, more meandering, or longer, more direct route. And I think for this particular spot, I'm gonna have the more direct route. Um, this is gonna be both a leisure route and a utilitarian transportation corridor. And I think it's, it's really important to understand what the purpose of your route is and understand that in some cases there will be overlap. So that is something that I know that in, in my profession, I drum away at all the time. I talk to people and I say, what is the purpose of the route that you're planning? Is it, is it to get people from point A to point B or is it because people wanna have a pleasant drive? So always an important thing to keep track of. And while we're over here, it looks like the elder care facility has filled up the cemetery. So. Let's get that empty. <laughs> um, so we're, we're okay, we've got this, this circle now, and I think that's gonna be really beneficial. I just wanna check my policies though. I wanna make sure, well, maybe not check my budget. Well, actually, I do wanna check my budget because I think I have some of this stuff cranked to a million. Yeah, my power generation and water generation is really good, and I've had this just kinda cranked now for a while, so let's take it down. So now we're at 100. I'd like to put out these fires, so to speak, pardon the pun, I know it's Verde Beach, <laughs> and, and uh, deal with them uh, in a more reasonable way, and that's not making everyone work overtime to take care of it. I think it's it's really building the facilities you need. <laughs> so, so so many cities wanna not do that, but Verde Beach is a, is a, is a good city. We're gonna, we're gonna not do that. So let's look at our policies. Um, and I want to make sure that with, with our city planning, we do have uh, encouraged biking, so that's good. So the other thing I want to take a look at is I have this policy that I enabled for smoke detector distribution. That's a really expensive policy. It didn't do the trick. So I'm going to get rid of that policy now. And we'll try to get our budget back in line and, and get this back into a good place. Uh, the other thing I want to do, we do have some... Uh, postal service facilities. Let's automate the survey, uh, the sorting, get our mail capacity up. Um, and at some point, we're going to want to take a look at, at mail again. It's, it's going to be a thing. And you can see that with these policy changes and with the adjustments to our budget, now we're making good money. And that's really important. And it allows us to invest more in things that matter to us, like, say, recycling and parks and recreation. Increase our, our parks budget. We, we love spending on our parks. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so now we have this bike network and I kinda just wanna go into the street level and see, wow, look at that. Look at all those people taking their bikes. There was clearly a demand for this that we weren't meeting. Now I wanna see if uh, the that, whoa, whoa, no, no, no. So we've taken our transit problem and pushed it to another mode is what it looks like to me. Yeah, so we got 300 at this stop. It's right by the harbor. So clearly a demand there. 300 at this stop, which this stop is the one that had the bus problems. It looks like literally everyone that was on the bus decided, I don't like the bus. Who wants to take the bus? Let's see, is this... Let's take a look at where our routes are. Oh, no, I was wrong. <laughs> Everyone is still on the bus, too. <laughs> so let's look at our line details. I'm wondering if this is going to clear up. You see that this stop over here is starting to clear up. And I don't know if that is uh, because of what we've been doing. I think we're just going to have to keep an eye on that. I mean, clearly, these are massive queues and these aren't gonna clear overnight. At the same time, uh, we don't wanna get reactive with, our, with our, our new tram route too much, because if we do, we're gonna way overdo our service here uh, in an effort to try to resolve some of this stuff. 
Uh, but for the time being, I'm going to get a little bit reactive and maybe double this. Um, but I do want to come back and take a look at this because once we clear some of these cues or we find out that we've actually induced demand, um, we'll need to, to make some other accommodations. So I think this was an important, an important thing to do. Um, we're just going to have to keep an eye on it. This is a, a situation that is still evolving. Let's look one more time. I want to look at this particular stop. Yeah. So we're down to 200 here. And that'll clear with a couple of vehicles. And look, we have that, this massive bunch of <laughs> red trams. Just kind of pinging and ponging over here back and forth. So later on down the line, we might want to think a little bit more about what we can do um, in terms of making this more efficient because we're going to end up now with traffic jams of trams and you kind of see it already. Um, and that's clearly not a good uh, situation for us to be in. That might be adding another tram depot somewhere else along our line. The problem is we already have a lot of development over here and there's not a lot of great places to fit this in unless we were to potentially have another tram line coming up here and plan something else in this area. And that's something that we could certainly do. You know, I do have ideas for how I want to connect this area up and this area over here. And the tram line could be a big component of that. But um, for the time being, I think we're just gonna sit tight. So next, I, I do want to take a look at our subway system, or a metro system, sorry. Um, and I want to think a little bit about what we're missing. So let's turn these lines on. So right now, the way that our system is designed, uh, we have all of this uh, traffic going to the university, going up through this stop, which is not really centrally located, I ideally, I think this stop would have been over here and uh, we would have one right in front of the university or, or somewhere within the university, but that is not what we did. Uh, that said, that is that does not mean that that's not what we can do. So I think some people might loop this. Uh, I'm not sure that I want to go that direction. I'm okay with spurs and I think that what I'm going to do is have a spur coming off up here and trying to serve this area up here and I want to look and I want to try to retrofit this in where I can slope too steep that's unfortunate because oh that's a parking lot anyway <laughs> well that's not gonna work I don't know that we're gonna have any spots available I was hoping there would be just an easy one but we're gonna have to make up our own so So again, with, with metro stations, we want to keep these relatively um, far away from, from one another. We don't want these too close. So I do want to look at our bus network and just see where people are queuing. So I was going to, I think this would be a natural spot for it because we get that turn. Uh, but I know that there are some issues. Like you look right here and there's a whole bunch of people waiting. So, maybe we'll make it a, a little bit more of a challenging movement, but one that's more beneficial on the whole. So this will be a much more expensive line to build as we have to loop around, but I think it's, it's going to, to serve more people. And then lastly, I think I want to have another stop in this general vicinity. So I think this is a good spot because people could cross and get to the zoo. And I think we're going to stop it here. And, uh, you know, maybe there's some merit to having one more near this aquatic center. Yeah, I think there, there probably is. <laughs> you can even see there's all of these people standing out front, just hanging out, having a good time. That said, I'm not sold on how we get that there just yet. And I want to make sure that what we're building makes sense. So there are two ways that I think this kind of expansion would occur. And that would either be via referendum uh, with a, a grand plan in, in, in mind and people being very much aware 
of what they're getting into uh, or incrementally. And in Verde Beach's case, because we already have a pretty robust system, I think that incremental expansion is what would occur. So you might wonder why I curved around this, and that is just to keep it out of the the zoo. Uh, if there's any rumbling, I just want to keep that away from the animals. Let's be a little conscientious of them. And then for our final movement here, we are going to loop this back around and connect up to our main line. So there's going to be a lot of pressure on this little spur here, but I think it's going to be okay. Yeah, I think it's going to function all right. We will keep an eye on that though. So we are either setting a whole bunch of traps <laughs> for the future or we are resolving issues with our transit network and potentially improving uh, the, 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 the some of the traffic that we are seeing on the roads. Although I think since the start of the episode, I've managed to make it worse. <laughs> and a lot of that comes down to all the trams coming up and down and, and, and through this area. So uh, that said, we do need to name this line. So we still have the lion line and that should no longer be the lion line. Uh, we'll make it the stadium district line. And let's see, this line, uh, clearly this should be the Hamilton line. And this will just be University Zoo. Let's see if we can make this the color of an ape or a chimp or monkey. I'm gonna get yelled at in the comments because I am messing up Jane Goodall's <laughs> life work. <laughs> so. All right, let's, I, I, I kind of just want to see at this point, what are we experiencing in this spur line? We are experiencing very few riders, <laughs> which is, you know, to be expected on a new line. It will get better over time, I, I, I assure you. But for the time being, utilization, maybe not that good. Maybe not that good. People are still very used to their bus and it takes some time for the AI to to react to that so let's do a little bit more investigation of our bike network so I think it would be nice to make some more key connections so the reason why I wanted to loop the forest and zoo is that now we kind of have an arterial uh, of the bike network going all the way around the entire area and we can use this to make key connections in the future. I want to make a connection to this, and one of the things I'm thinking in the future might be nice, would be to have some sort of bike facility going through this area that's that, that, that has trees. And that would be the highway of the bike network. And now that we have this, this main arterial looping the city, we can start thinking of ways to make that connection in the future. Uh, but for the time being, we do need to make those local connections that are incredibly important. And one of those connections is going to be to Central Station. So let's do that now. So this is really a purposeful route. We're building a route that we know will get people to a place that they're going to need to get to. So again, this is one that I know will get a lot of utilization. And look at that. Look at all those bikers already. Very good. So unfortunately, because of the width uh, of this uh, this harbor district, I can't actually get a bike lane through here, which really bugs me. Uh, in fact, it makes me kind of wish that uh, I would have made this a bike facility. But now that we can't cross it, I guess it doesn't matter as much. So we're probably just going to leave it, and that'll be just kind of a missed opportunity that we'll have to hopefully remedy in the future in, in some way with off-street facilities. Not 100% sure how we would do that just yet. Um, but if you've got any ideas, let me know down in the comments. I would certainly be interested in entertaining those if you have a great idea. All right, next, we've got the Hamilton experience. I know that there's been a lot of interest in making this a one-way, but look, here's why I didn't do it. It doesn't really matter now. Now that we've got all this transit in this area, holy cow, <laughs> that is awesome. All of these people flooding in, littering in the, in the Hamilton experience. Because <laughs> 
garbage is piling up, so that is probably my fault for lowering the budget for trash. I do want to take a look and make sure that we're not having any uh, uh, any problems with, with trash accumulating in places. It's not that bad. We've got coverage over here, so it's just a very a very good spot to litter, apparently. <laughs> it's just, that's what happens at these sorts of places, unfortunately. Um, you know, since this is so popular, I do think, you know, we're going to Disney-fy this. Raise the price. Why not? <laughs> so the reason why I wanted to look at the Hamilton experience is we now have the potential to make a bike connection through here, and I think we should. Again, I think that would be a great opportunity. So let's do that. The other thing is we've got this tourism district and I know we have this nice tree lined street. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> so the reason I say that is we have no parking. So we're, we're forcing all of this parking to occur off street. Plus we don't have bike facilities. So we're forcing all the bikers onto the sidewalks. I think there's a, a more efficient use of this roadway and that very well might be converting that over to a bike lane. And we are greatly disappointing everyone in the tourism district. And we are looping that so that we come back to the bike network. If at all possible, I like to do that because then people can make a, a complete trip. Unless it's a major destination, uh, might as well loop that. And look at all of this bike activity. It's really it's really outstanding. How about at the Hamilton Experience? Bikes. I love it. I love it. Getting people out of their cars uh, and uh, into their bikes. Can't really ask for much more. I wonder where this person's going. Going to the Home Improvement Center on his bicycle. Uh, that's, a, that's a curious decision. And on the sidewalk for some reason too. Oh, the Home Improvement Center is right here. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, and another fire. Cool. Well, it's uh, we're back. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So we've got some connections there. Now, one major. Oh, well, we missed it, or at least I missed it. Maybe you didn't. <laughs> but there was a fire in the zoo. But apparently, it wasn't devastating. It was just not good. And I, you know, I've read a lot of comments about fire breaks, and I think there might be some value in uh, in exploring that in the future. You can see that in this case, the fire didn't jump the road, and with with how dense this is, it's a real big problem. At the very least, if I were to separate some of these trees from some of these campsites, uh, or or I guess denude the area <laughs> of of all trees, uh, then maybe. I would be in a position to uh, not need to rebuild the, this all the time. You know, we can deal with fires. Fires are natural. They're supposed to happen. And apparently Verde Beach is a place where fires are supposed to happen all the time. So um, yeah, we, we, we'll, have to, we'll have to think about that. So I want to get bikes over to this area because right now, so first of all, we have no parking. <laughs> <laughs> except for the stuff that comes with some of these buildings and we have no way to bike over here except I guess you can bike across these paths going through the uh, through the university so I guess that is an option uh, it's not the greatest option in my mind but it is an, an option I think for the time being we're gonna just convert some of these roads to be bike facilities this is a campus area you figure a lot of people would come to campus with their bikes and they'd want to be able to get around on their bikes not on sidewalks so the other thing I want to do is I want to try to get this bike network into the Lewis Garden City now you think that this would make a ton of sense because think about it this is a green area so let's get it uh, let, let's bring it into the bike network so I will readily admit that this would not be the most pleasant bike ride, <laughs> but you know, you're kind of working within the, uh, the environment that you have. 
Now let's take a look at the roads here. And I, I don't think we really have much of anything in terms of, uh, in terms of, you know, you know, really bike amenities in this area. So I think that what we're going to want to do is make a couple of key connections. Unfortunately, I am going to take away some of these crossings again by adding bike facilities, but I think it's important enough that I'll do it. So I think I'm going to go, actually, maybe I don't have to do that. No, I, I do. <laughs> as I as I think about this just a little bit, I can't bring it into this Oak Street circle because I don't believe that I have a one-way bike street. I don't. So that means I am stuck on Peyton Circle. And it stinks because I made a couple of key connections across there, but I think it's uh, going to be the situation that we're stuck with. And the other thing I want to get to is this transit, uh, this, uh, this this train station. So that's that's the key destination in this area. And now, all of the people along this bike route really have this train station uh, available to them. And that's something that wasn't the case uh, before. So I noticed I haven't been naming these stations. And... Uh, This will be the Huey Lewis station. You know, what this district really needs is a TV station. So we can have the news right by Huey Lewis. I think, I th oh, I'm, I'm gonna do it. I've gotta do it. <laughs> so a little, little, little sidebar here. I think we're gonna put the news right here. Okay, so we've got this TV station, but we have one more asset available to us that we're going to place as well. Okay, the multimedia broadcast building. So I think that both of these fit in really well. So this is going to be Verde Beach News 7. Verde Newsline 9. So we'll have the two TV stations right next to one another. And uh, this might actually have uh, some ramifications for our power delivery in this area. And you see that it does. And this is a good ramification because we can get rid of some of these super ugly power lines that are through here. Unfortunately, we still need these ones. And I just want to double check. We actually don't. <laughs> as soon as I run this, we are not going to have power connections through a significant portion of this area because we need a connection here. Now, I haven't run the uh, landscaping uh, simulation yet today, so I think I'm gonna do that right now. Uh, after I place some water pads, under er, water pipes under the road where they belong. Okay, we have water. Now, let's do a bit of landscaping. Okay, and while we're doing this, I think we're also going to throw in a fence over here. This would be a significant noise problem for a TV station. And as a result, the city would likely require a great deal of buffering between the uses. Now, this probably would have come from the train when it was being built, or the, 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 the train terminal when, when it was being built. Uh, but we didn't do that. So therefore, the TV station is going to be responsible for doing that. This land is valuable enough to them, so they will take care of it. So the real question is, what type of fence do we put in here? Clearly not a nature reserve fence. We don't want it to be a sheer fence. So I think we might actually go with something like this, uh, this forestry area fence, forestry district fence. And then along there, I'm going to put a ton of landscaping because that is exactly what would be required in an area like this. Uh, we would want that landscaping to act as a noise buffer in between these uses. So I know we already have a lot of trees, 
but we're gonna have more and I'm gonna clear the trees on the cargo terminal side of the fence just to make it a little bit more natural so that is exactly what I would expect to see there uh, in terms of the trees here well maybe there's a rivalry between these two buildings my guess is ultimately they're probably related but uh, you know what would, but uh, it, it makes it look a little bit nicer so and it makes it a fire hazard so now we could burn down the entire lewis garden city district and have a nice connection to burning down this cargo terminal as well so we've got that going for us uh, so we did extend our bike network here but we have one more bike path that we're not or one more train station that we're not connected to and we have our other bike network in this district that I'd love to connect up to. So we are going to make our last bike connection before kind of evaluating what we've done today. Because I do think it's important not to just upgrade all this stuff. We've got to see if there's utilization, look at our traffic, and see if things are actually getting better. I think that's one of the things that I can fail at sometimes in this game is just let's let's build all this stuff all right i feel better about it good <laughs> good enough and you know that's uh that that can be what happens so now we have these lanes striped here now in reality so all of these lanes are striped with this this green paint or thermal plastic depending on where you are i think that's pretty uh, un unre unreasonable for what we've just done i think that it's it's already expensive enough to stripe bike lanes and do it correctly. And uh, that, you know, getting a significant chunk of money to stripe bike lanes would be a good project. Removing all this parking, incredibly, incredibly, incredibly controversial. Reasonably, this would probably only happen if we had the right of way to maintain parking on at least one side of the road. And th that would be the cross section that I would likely recommend to start out with. Um, and then if, if we can do more, great. Uh, the other benefit to that is then we narrow up the lanes. Um, we, we can have, if we want to maintain our bike lane widths, let's say we want to get at least a six foot lane on either side, uh, and we want to make sure there's no dooring, um, we need to narrow up the drive lanes, which slows down traffic and makes people pay a little bit more attention. So I wouldn't remove uh, all parking and say we just have bike lanes and we're funneling all this traffic through. but. That's, that's what happens in the game, and we work within the confines of, of what we have. So, completely fine. So I do think we are in a good spot. And you see, you can see all of these bikers using this. And that, that makes me feel like this was a good call to, to, to add. The other thing, let's just, I wanna add a reminder to myself, and I'll do this from time to time. Uh, this is the bike lane. So in the future, Phil, Phil in the future, add a bike lane. <laughs> so um, I think that's going to be a really important thing to do. The other thing that we might want to think about before we end is to kind of just take a look around and make sure that we have bike lanes going to some of our core transit stations. So we have a station right here. Why not have a bike lane going there? and give people the opportunity to leave this underground metro station and use the bike. Or, we could just have this bus parked in this bike lane and make it totally useless for anyone on a bike. <laughs> I guess they're navigating around it, so it's not completely terrible. Uh, so let's take a look. I do wanna see, is our situation in front of the station improving? It is not. <laughs> so let's, I kind of just want to look. Where are people going? This person's going to the comedy club. So my guess is this bus route provides a slightly, well, actually, no. The bus route is nowhere near that. So that is bizarre. So if I had traffic manager, I would probably just clear everything and let this start over because I know that these people are going to basically stand here until they either time out, which is, I think, you know, five, six minutes or maybe longer. And, or this is, well, yeah, this is, this would have cleared out multiple times to the episode. There are just so many people who want to use this route. So we're going to need to continue to look at this and see if there are more 
things that we can do to improve this and that might include adding another bus depot over here because as I look at this and I've got this on the fastest setting we are not getting a lot of buses over here so I do think I am gonna do that one thing I'm gonna make all these people over here very 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 upset we will add a bio fuss, bio fuel bus depot over here and we will use eminent domain because I don't really see another good option we've got this path here we don't want to take that out the only other thing we could do is build on the beachfront not happening <laughs> I guess actually we can sneak it in here this is probably the best solution that we could expect that was city owned land it was forested so we'd have to remove some trees that's unfortunate but it's not as bad as as knocking down some some skyscrapers paying millions of dollars to build a biofuel bus depot it's not like a train station where it's a really high quality uh, method of transit that uh, would really boost the values around it this is a bus depot if anything it would lower the values of property around it and people would really protest having this sort of a use in proximity in close proximity to them so um, it's probably as good as we're gonna get at least we can say that there's some synergy the only thing that m makes me a little regretful is there is one building that I you know a and since we focused on transit so much I think it would make a ton of sense to get the transit tower over here really finish up this episode and I'm wondering okay that wouldn't have fit so I'm not gonna feel all that bad about that uh, this area over here though seems to have a lot of low-rise commercial buildings and that is because the road is a little off skew so I think that we are going to add the transit tower right here or we're not <laughs> without significant disruption to this road network which I am prepared to do yeah it's just a, a little bit too big in every direction that's okay we're gonna use eminent domain the transit agency has its own tax so they are totally fine using eminent domain to take over this entire block and uh, really make it the transit centerpiece of the community okay, I want to be really cautious with this road I don't want it to be disruptive so I think I might actually use only angle to try to make a, a smooth connection through here and then make my other connection and use a snap to there as well now we'll use my road guidelines to make this as nice of a connection as I can and I am very reluctant uh, very regretful of making this road extend as far as I did because now I'm snapping to this road directly and that's not what I want to do. So it's not going to be 100% clean, but it's pretty darn good. I think we're going to take away the zoning here so we can have some landscaping around there. And uh, we'll call that a day on the transit tower. Okay, I know it might have seemed like, you know, a little bit of overkill to go through and landscape this entire area, but I really do think it makes a big difference in the way that these neighborhoods feel. It makes them feel like real places. So taking just an extra second when you place a big building like this and adding some landscaping around it, that would be one of the plans that's submitted with this tower. We'd expect to see a lighting plan, a site plan, a utility plan, a landscaping plan, um, you know among others and there would you know we'd also want to see renderings and details as well so uh, having the landscaping added uh, or not adding the landscaping would be really missing a key component of a site plan for a building like this uh, so I think that we are in a spot <laughs> we're not this isn't this isn't done yet and we're gonna need to figure out a little bit more what's happening here yeah, people are, are prioritizing 
buses. I don't, I don't understand exactly what's going on. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research on this, uh, and hopefully we can clear that up. That said, let's take a look at this route one more time. You know what? I was wrong. We are doing better. There's only 495, 500 people there. That is significantly better than before. People, or buses. All right, buses are finally coming out of the biofuel depot. I just need to be patient because things are happening. Things are improving. And on this line, no backups at all. We can probably turn this down just a little bit. Or maybe we'll just leave good enough alone <laughs> for the time being. We'll see if there's a lot of traffic in that area. It's not too bad. Oh, well, that's a great way to end the episode. <laughs> a fire ripped through the entire university. And uh, as a result, we keep we keep oscillating between having four and three stars. Now we're going to have to go to a one star university because we have no students on a campus with no dorms. Makes sense. <laughs> so... That's unfortunate. I totally missed that. We had a, a one day reprieve and now we're paying for it <laughs> by having Jane Goodall's entire university completely, completely die. <laughs> so hopefully the students come back because we're in a tough spot. Let's uh, speed this up for a second. So you see that you see that we are getting students back in here, but I wonder if maybe hiring some additional academic staff and again, trying some more academic works will improve things. Let's also lower the ticket prices a little bit and we'll see if that helps at all. Um, I think we'll at least get back to 800. I don't know when we're going to get to five stars on the university. It's going to take time. And uh, it's probably going to take more population, which is probably going to be the one of the things that we need to focus on in the next episode, uh, because I do think that transit and active transportation go hand in hand with housing. And now that we have a good transit and, tr and active transportation network, uh, if we kind of do some targeted housing development, maybe we can continue to have a great traffic flow like we have right now. Lastly, let's take a look at our subway lines and see how they're doing. And the most popular one is the Stadium District line. That's also our oldest line. Hamilton is right behind it. That's great. And our Metro Line 4. That is the University and Zoo line is our second uh, most utilized line. So... You folks in the comments were right. This was absolutely necessary. <laughs> so, good job. Looking at our buses, I think we're probably in a better spot than we were. I'll stop emptying those cemeteries real quick. Uh, just one more look before we end the episode. Yeah, there's still a lot of uh, a lot of queuing here, but I do think. We are in a much better spot than we were, although not a better spot than we were about three minutes ago. So it's it's getting better, but it's going to take some time. So with that, I'm pretty pleased with where we've gone today. I think that the city's improving, and we certainly are getting people out of their cars and into alternative forms of transportation. And that's relatively evident when you take a look and you see that there's not any significant areas of backup. There's a couple here and there, but... In general, our transportation network is looking really, really good. So uh, with that, I think I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this video, please consider hitting that like button. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. And if you want to be notified when I create new videos, hit the notification bell. I really want to give a big shout out to my Patreon community development director level supporters. And their name is shown here. Uh, please stay tuned. I'm going to have a city tour right now.